So here are my thoughts on Nintendo's March 8th Direct. It's been a couple weeks since it happened, so now we can take a more objective look at it instead of getting swallowed up by the hype. Speaking of hype, did you see the new Smash Brothers reveal? Yes, of course I saw it, and also the 18 billion reaction videos being uploaded. They're all kind of the same in that everyone had zero idea what it was until the logo showed up. They showed Splatoon 2 models for the past five minutes and then said, One more thing! And then showed weapons and characters from Splatoon 1, and people were shocked when the Smash logo appeared. You'd think this would have immediately cued people's brains to Smash Bros, since Inklings are such obvious additions, and Smash Switch has been rumored for quite a while. Inklings are in it, and a veteran has a new costume. Brand new game, not a port. The zero seconds of gameplay we saw proves it. This game has done nothing similar to other Smash Bros. To everyone saying this, you might want to quell your expectations a little bit. While I do think it will be marketed as a new game, because that will sell more copies than an enhanced port, don't be surprised if this game copy-pastes anywhere from 60-90% of its content from the Wii U and 3DS games. Because if there's one thing that gamers love to ignore, it's that game design is hard and takes a long time, and it's much easier to port stuff over than to entirely recreate everything. Which is fine. Smash 4 is the best one, with the best roster, and doesn't need any major retooling mechanically, and definitely deserves new life on another console, but expect it to be more of a Smash 4.75 than a true Smash 5. They'll probably take pretty much everything from the Wii U game, bring in a bunch of stuff from the 3DS game, and then pile on a bunch of new stuff. Which again, is fine. What are you most looking forward to? This may come at a surprise, but definitely Octopath Traveler. Despite all the Splatoon 2 videos I make, I'm a huge fan of RPGs. This game is a spiritual successor to Bravely Default, and it's being made by a lot of the same people. I loved Bravely Default except for the last third, people who played the game know exactly what I'm talking about. And while I didn't hate it, I was ultimately underwhelmed by Bravely Second. So for those of you who are like me and want a Bravely Third, this is that. Also, the Bravely series and Octopath look to play somewhat similarly to Final Fantasy V with its multi-classing, which is my personal favorite Final Fantasy. I love the Octopath demo. Great music, great art direction, great battle system, great characters, great voice acting, great tough bosses, great bonus dungeon hidden in the demo showing the battle system's true potential. Don't sleep on Octopath. And speaking of Octo, we also have updates for Splatoon 2. Rank X, also known as Rank Wakanda, should help fix Splatoon 2's broken-ass rank system. Unlike in Splatoon 1, it's very easy to get to S+. In certain situations, you can even lose more battles than you win, and still rank up, and then players who are S plus 0 can face off against players who are S plus 50, so a lot of rank matches are near unplayable since there's such huge gaps in skill. Rank X should hopefully fix that, since players who are S plus 10 and above won't go up against lower ranks, making it a little bit more even. Also, 100 plus pieces of gear will give players a reason to enter the shops again. If you play this game at least 2-3 to three days per week and buy everything, then after about a month, you'll have all the gear. And I would prefer them to release a couple of new pieces of gear every month instead of dump a bunch of new gear every 5 months. And a lot of the stuff looks like it's either from Splatoon 1 or palette swaps of stuff that's already in the game. New gear is new gear, and I'm not going to complain about it. Camp Triggerfish is coming back, which is really exciting. It was a pretty popular stage in Splatoon 1, and next to Founder Heights, it was my personal favorite stage. Prana Pit just came back too. I was very indifferent on this map in Splatoon 1, but at least they fixed Rainmaker on it because it used to be just unplayable. There's also the new stage Wahoo World. Looks fine. Oh yeah, and Kali comes back too. Sounds like something that should have been in the game at launch instead of almost a year later, but hey, better late than never, I guess. But of course the biggest reveal is the Octo Expansion Pack, which will now let you play as sort of an Octoling. People have been wanting to play as them since the day Splatoon 1 launched, and it only took 3 years and 2 games and 20 extra dollars, pay up bitch! And in order to unlock them, you have to play more... single player? Did anyone want more single player levels? Did anyone actually like Splatoon 2's hero mode? Because I didn't. Splatoon 1's hero mode gets a free pass since all the mechanics were brand new and it basically served as a glorified tutorial 
And Splatoon 2 Zero Mode did a lot of stuff, like letting you use every weapon class and introducing new enemies. It did some new stuff, but it just felt like more Splatoon 1 again. Kind of an analogy for the whole game. And it's clear they planned this DLC from the game first launched. You can see where you probably enter the subway in Inkopolis. But it's likely that at the time the game launched, their ideas probably weren't fully realized. And we didn't really see too much from the trailer, although Game Explained did do a really good analysis showing a lot of hidden details I highly recommend watching. Octo Expansion sort of looks like more hero mode. Can it actually be good? How to make Octo Expansion actually be good. Step 1. Tell an actual story. Splatoon 1 Hero Mode had a shell of a story, and Splatoon 2 had even less of one. In fact, it can be summarized in one sentence. Callie and the Great Zapfish are missing. In the last level, you find them. That's it, that's the whole thing, I left out zero details. And while the sunken sea scrolls in Splatoon 1 told you about the lore of the world that the squids live in, Splatoon 2 basically had no info on them. Hey, it's me, Crusty Sean, I'm moving my shop. Cool, dude. From the trailer, we can see new characters and actual dialogue, so maybe you'll actually do this. Step 2. Add in new gameplay objectives. At its best, Hero Mode was a mix between Mario Galaxy and Sonic Adventure 2. And at its worst was this fucking bullshit. And there are only three types of levels. Get the big fish, get the little fish, get the boss. So if Octo Expansion wants to distinguish itself from Hero Mode, then... Do something different. Step two and a half. Please do not pad out the gameplay. One feature that I can't believe they brought back in Splatoon 2 Hero Mode was all the levels being invisible and you have to find them. This was really annoying and not fun at all, and all it did was artificially lengthen single player. Like it seriously added an hour onto my first playthrough. Since Octo Expansion takes place in a subway, I just want to be able to use the subway to go directly to the level, not spraying at nothing for the better part of an hour. Also having to repeat the levels to get the hero weapons was dumb. Especially because your first time through hero mode levels with the exception of the Octoling get the little fish levels, you couldn't pick your weapon, so in order to get a single hero weapon, you basically have to play each level twice. So I had to do more of something I didn't want to do in order to get something I actually wanted. Just like real life. It looks like you will get to pick which weapon you use for each level, but I hope this doesn't eventually lead to the player having to keep repeating the same levels, but with different weapons, but rather which weapon you pick determines your difficulty and your high score and potential rewards. And speaking of... Step 3! More rewards for completion! After paying 20 extra dollars, pay up bitch, and playing through 80 single player levels which will take anywhere from 6 to 10 hours or even more, you get essentially what's an alternate squid form, which you'll never see in a match since you'll be in ink, and a glorified hairstyle what 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 the fuck is that? Get, get, get that out of here. In Splatoon 1, when you complete hero mode, you get the hero gear, the Octoling gear, the hero shot, blueprints for weapons and multiplayer you can otherwise get, and eventually you could level up and get the Octo shot, and three pieces of hero armor. In Splatoon 2, you get the hero gear. And then if you replay the levels over and 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 over, then you could get the hero weapons for use in multiplayer. So I hope that the rewards for playing through Octo Expansion will be somewhat substantial, and by that I mean exclusive gear and weapon skins, and maybe even the actual Octoling hair as a hat or something, and not whatever the hell this is supposed to be. I don't think you should get too much stuff, because Given that Splatoon has been the champion of free DLC, you don't want players to think that the game's coolest looking stuff is locked behind a paywall. ROCKET LEAGUE! But it would be nice to get rewarded with some stuff periodically as you progress through the 80 levels. And not stuff that's like the pre-order bonus. Wow, you put a sticker on something already in the game and called it new? Gee, Splatoon has never done that before. And while it's a terrible idea to have exclusive weapon sets locked behind Octo Expansion, alternate looks for existing weapons would be great. 
And while I hope it wouldn't be the Octa weapons, it would probably be the Octa weapons. Which would suck because we got the Octa shot for Frame Splatoon 1. Step 4, add in co-op. There's no co-op. Step 5, new music. The music in hero mode, at its best, was copy-pasted from Splatoon 1. And at its worst was... So I hope Octo Expansion will be good, and I hope it does some or all of those things. Splatoon 2 will feel like a true sequel with its addition. What did you think of the rest of the Direct? Really? Okay, real quick. Don't care! Don't care! Don't care! No Danny DeVito? No buy! Don't care! I already beat this game. It was... fine. Looks fine. Don't care! Looks fine. Hell yeah! Don't care! Good game, but the worst fans. Looks fine. Don't care! Looks fine. You press buttons! Uh, ARMS is a game. I've played this game before. Introducing the all new Zone Shot. It lets you pinpoint any spot you want to aim at using motion controls and send the ball crashing down. Zone Shots are really powerful. So if you get hit by one, your racket will take some damage. If your racket takes three hits, it'll break, forcing you to forfeit if it's your last one. It's an instant KO! But don't give up hope. Return a shot with perfect timing, and you'll block protecting your racket. It's no small feat to nail the timing just right. That's where zone speed comes into play. When using zone speed, the world around you moves in slow motion, allowing you to perform incredible feats, like chasing down a quick shot. It's no instant win card. You can only initiate these moves by using up some of your energy gauge. Energy gauge slowly fills up the longer you keep a rally going. But the fastest way to fill up your gauge is with the new trick shot. If a ball gets away from you, you can jump over to knock it back. It's a risky maneuver. If you don't judge the timing or distance correctly, you may waste your energy or lose a point. Shot. The special shot. It will eat up your energy in a big way, but this thing can really turn the tide. It may even destroy your opponent's racket in one hit. However, not even a special shot guarantees a win. There's always a chance it could be blocked, so watch out. In these intense matches, every move you make presents a risk, and hopefully a reward. Your energy gauge could be the key to victory. You can play a match with your friends or other players. Events and online tournaments will be held allowing you to compete against other players. 